Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you today's word for February 10th, 2017. I'm teaching a series on the miracles of Jesus, and I trust that this series has been a blessing to you thus far. On this morning, we're going to look at uh, another miracle. It's the story where Jesus healed a man with a withered hand, and I really like this story. And I'm calling this story, or today's message, Expose Your Issue to God. You must be willing to expose your issue to God. So I'm going to pick this up in Matthew chapter 12. In Matthew 12, Jesus and his disciples are walking through uh, a grain field, and it's the Sabbath day, right? And this is key to this story. So it's it's the Sabbath day. They're walking through a grain field, and they're hungry. So some of the disciples start just grabbing some heads of grain and cracking them open and eating uh, the heads of grain. Well, the Pharisees, remember we've been talking about the Pharisees? The Pharisees had a team that was following Jesus and his disciples. And this team, as soon as they saw the disciples uh, eating grain right there in the grain fields, they came and accused Jesus and his team of breaking the Sabbath, uh, right? It's like they were the religious rule police or something. And uh, Jesus took the opportunity uh, to teach them about the Sabbath. Uh, and then he was like, listen, at the end of the day, Jesus closed with this statement. The son of man, which is him, he's saying the son of man is Lord over the Sabbath day. You're focusing on the Sabbath. You need to be focusing on me. I am Lord of the Sabbath. So Jesus left that little altercation. And uh, the Bible says that he and his team went to the synagogue. Well, when they got to the synagogue, there was a man there with a withered hand. And uh, guess who else was there? The Pharisees were there too. And so right there in the synagogue, as soon as they saw Jesus, the Pharisees saw Jesus, and then they saw the man with the with the hand, they knew what was about to happen. And this is what they did. These people are just uh, annoying people, man. Religious people are some annoying people. So they came and they wanted to, to set Jesus up, right? So they knew it was the Sabbath. They knew this man had a withered hand. They knew that Jesus was probably going to heal him. So they come to Jesus and say, okay, excuse me, sir, is it right to heal on the Sabbath day? And Jesus looked at them and was like, man, you got to be kidding me. I mean, you guys are really more focused on the Sabbath than you're focused on this man. So Jesus said, okay, listen, um, let's say that you have a sheep, right? And this sheep falls into a ditch, but it just so happens to be Saturday. Now, what do you want? What are you gonna do? I mean, are you gonna just leave the sheep there because it's Saturday? You can't. You're gonna tell the sheep, "Sorry, sorry, sheep, I can't pull you out because that would be work." And since it's Saturday uh, and I'm supposed to be resting today, I guess you're just gonna have to wait till tomorrow. No, you're gonna take that sheep and you're gonna pull him out the ditch. So he's asking Jesus and says, "So, so bottom line is, do you think it's good? Uh, it's okay to do good on Saturday on the Sabbath." Is it okay to do something that's good? Even though you might consider it to be work, you're doing something that's good, that's glorifying the Father. Is it okay to do that on the Sabbath? And the people are kind of thinking about that. And while they're thinking about that, Jesus then turned his attention to the man with the withered hand. He didn't, he is almost like he gave the Pharisees the Heisman. It's like, look, I don't have time for you guys. He looks out, uh, looks at the man with the withered hand and says, I love this part. He says, Stretch forth your hand. And the man immediately took the withered hand and attempted to stretch it forth. And as he did, the Bible says that it became as whole as the other hand. So Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. He stretched forth his hand and immediately it was healed. It became just like the other hand. So just like that, Jesus performed another miracle. But the sad part is that the Bible says then the Pharisees left there and made plans to kill Jesus. The Pharisees left there after Jesus healed the man with the withered hand on a Saturday. I can't believe he did that on a Saturday. And they left there with plans to kill Jesus. So if you know me, you know I want to talk about these Pharisees, but I'm going to talk about the man with the withered hand first. So what does this mean to you today? What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some points today on Friday that focus on the man with the withered hand. And then on Monday, I'm coming back and I'm going to talk about these Pharisees and how this applies to us today. So let me give you some points, four points, 
as it relates to the man with the withered hand. And I believe that these uh, points are going to be a blessing to you. Here we go. Number one, don't allow your issue to rob you of your worship. Never allow your issue to rob you of your worship. The man with the withered hand had a clear issue, but he was still in the house of God. He was worshiping despite his issue. It, see, here's my point. My point is that if you are going to wait until everything is perfect in your life before you give God some worship, before you give God some praise, then you're going to be waiting a long time. You must learn to worship your way through the storms of life. You must learn to give God some praise in the middle of your situation. You need to praise your way through it. You need to worship your way through it. This man was in the house of God despite his withered hand. Number two, make your way to the house of God. Listen, I don't talk about this a lot. I, I don't tell you guys to go to church often, but I'm going to tell you this morning, make your way to the house of God. The man with the withered hand was in the house of God when he received this breakthrough. There's no telling how many times he came to the house of God with his issue. And even though it wasn't healed, even though he came Saturday after Saturday and it wasn't healed, he kept coming. He was there that, that Saturday minding his own business when he received his breakthrough. And his breakthrough came in the house of God, in the presence of God. So my point to you is, if you have been allowing your issue to keep you from the house of God, then you need to change that today. Change that attitude today. Resolve today that you are going back to the house of God. Number three, the power of God can be released at any time. Now, this is where in 2017, this is a year of supernatural manifestation for us. You have to live your life live out this year with an expectation of the supernatural. This thing can happen at any time. You just never know when the power of God is going to be released in your life. The man with the withered hand was in the house of God, minding his own business. When Jesus looked at him and said, stretch, stretch forth your hand. And boom, the power of God was revealed in his life, was manifested in his life. You have to be ready. Always, always be ready for whatever God wants to do in, with, and through your life. It can happen at any time, at any time, which is why you should live your life with an expectation. Listen, today could be your day. It can happen at any time. What you've been believing God for, what you've been, what God has already revealed to you in your heart and you haven't seen it yet in your hands and you're believing God for, it can happen today and it can happen at any time. So you, sh you should live your life with an expectation that it can happen at any time. Number four, and finally, you must be willing to expose your issue to God. Think about this for a moment. When Jesus said to the man, stretch forth your hand, Jesus didn't tell him which hand. <laughs> what if the man was so self-conscious that he kept his withered hand hidden? What if the, the man had just presented his good hand to Jesus? Well, if he had done that, he would have missed out on his blessing. It's always easy to present your good side to God, but you got to remember that God knows everything. He knows all the stuff you did in the dark. He knows He knows every part of you, <laughs> every aspect of you. So there's really nothing you can hide from God anyway. So God wants to, if you want God involved and you're not so good side, you need to expose your not so good side to him. Why? Because God is not going to force you to be blessed. He's not going to, he's not going to force his will on you. If you want him involved in it, you need to expose it to him. You need to bring your issue to his feet. If you, if you fail, to expose your issue to God. If you fail to expose your not so good side to God, then you might miss out on God's best and it won't be God's fault. It'll be your fault. So yes, I know that we like to present our good hand to people, but we got to be willing to expose our withered hand to God. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me and declare this in faith from a believing heart. Repeat after me. Say this. Say, Father, this is a year of great victory for me. <laughs> this year, I will experience supernatural manifestation like never before because I am willing to expose every issue to you. I don't hold anything back. I don't have anything that is off limits to you. I give you my whole heart. I expose you to my entire life. I want you, Father, involved in every area. And I also know that breakthrough can happen at any time. So I live my life with an expectation of your best. I am quick to present my withered hand to you, knowing that you can make it whole. 
I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word, apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Look on the right-hand side of the website and sign up and get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. I know you know someone who needs to watch this video, so share it with them. As you walk into this day, be willing to expose your issue to God. Don't hold anything back from God. Get God involved in every area, every aspect of your life, and live every day with an expectation of manifestation. God bless you.